and the choir began to sing the rays from the image pierced the sacred host and spread out over the world. Then I heard these words. These rays of mercy will pass through you just as they have passed through this host and they will go out throughout the world. At these words, profound joy invaded my soul. When we have revelations like that and moments like that, they are everlasting because that same Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And those words are being fulfilled here among us now at this moment. That's why we need to pray that the rays of love, of mercy can penetrate our hearts now so that they may go out through us too throughout all the world I'd like to just prepare your heart for that to happen you may sit or kneel whichever you seem appropriate for you during these hours at our conference of mercy we're always led to invite you to sit with a scripture passage and in that passage what has been happening through the conference time is revealed to us in a new way we've sit and we've listened and heard many words witnessed many things now the Lord is saying, they're all in your heart, in your mind, in your being. Now let me open them up to you, that in a new way you may understand my everlasting mercy for you, for all. Scripture passage felt drawn to pray with you this morning is taken from John. It's the story of Martha, Mary, Lazarus. We know in the story that Jesus has delayed coming in answering the response to come that Lazarus' friend was sick. He arrives. And when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. As Bethany is near Jerusalem, about two miles away, many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to offer consolation at their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, while Mary remained sitting in the house. And she said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that whatever you ask from God, 
God will give you. Jesus said, Your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection of the dead at the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. Whoever believes in me, though they die, shall live. Whoever is alive by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha then answered, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. After that, Martha went and called her sister Mary, quietly saying, The Master is here and is calling for you. As soon as Mary heard this, she rose up and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her also came. When they saw her get up, they, they thought that she was going to go to the tomb and weep. As for Mary, when she came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews also who had come with her, he was moved in the depths of his spirit and troubled. Then he asked, Where have you laid him? They answered, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. The Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, If he could open the eyes of this blind man, could he not have kept this man from dying? Jesus was deeply moved again and drew near to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across it. Jesus ordered, take the stone away. Martha said by this, Lord, by now he'll smell, for this is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So, they removed the stone. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for you have heard me. I knew that you hear me always, but my prayer was for the sake of these people, that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Yes, maybe you'd like to sit with that and while your mind may have wandered during it, something just may have struck you. We'll come back to it 
in a few minutes and we'll just take the three, those three parts in that story. We'll look at them a little bit deeper. But as you go back over it, you'll see that this was a story of faith. It keeps coming up. Do you believe? Yes, Lord, I believe. This faith. It's a story, too, of trust. Being invited to trust. Jesus trusting that God, the Father, is going to answer his prayer. The trust of Lazarus coming out. All sorts of... But one thing that strikes you about it, this is a story about people. Real people. Reacting and acting in very human ways. With Mary, with Martha, with Jesus, with the Jews, the onlookers, all very human here, very weak. But there's another thing that you might miss. It's a story of friendship. All who are here in this story are friends. They have come to be with Martha and Mary. It might help you to ask, who am I in this story? Because the deepest message of this story is that it is a story about love. It's a story of love. Just stay. Open your heart to all those people in it and say, who am I most like today? Let's remember that throughout this weekend as we've had stories of grief, of losses of loved ones, mentioned again and again in different ways. How real it is then for us to hear this. When Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. As Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to offer consolation at their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary remains sitting in the house. She said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know that he will rise in the resurrection of the dead at the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am 
the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, they shall live. Whoever is alive by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha then answered, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. And after that, Martha went and called her sister Mary, quietly saying, The Master is here and is calling for you. As soon as Mary heard this, she rose and went to him. Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. And the Jews were with him, with her in the house, consoling her, also came. When they saw her get up and go out, they followed her thinking that she was going to go to the tomb to weep. As for Mary, when she came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. How real these people are. Martha and Mary are not hiding behind a super spirituality here. They know their pain, their loss. They know their anger that Jesus had delayed in coming to, to them when they had sent word for him to come. They know the, the grief of having love lost their loved brother and that their friend seemingly wasn't there. They're very real and speaking this out to him. It's also significant that they both went to meet him halfway. Even though he seemed to have let them down, they took that journey to him. They were real with him in their anger, in their grief, their pain. But that love that they had for him drew him, drew them to him. We may be sitting right here now with anger, grief, pain, asking that same question. Why, Lord? Why? Why my brother, whatever the loved one was, why did you take? Where were you? It's real for us. Jesus is saying to us, do you believe I am the resurrection and the life? He spoke to us yesterday to Father Philip's testimony, the story about his mother and his belief that had been given to him that he could believe and understand the joy.
of his mother had been released to God. Lord, give us that faith that we may believe. Martha said, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. The one who is coming into the world. The one who is saying, can I come into your world today? And through you into the world of all who are angry, frustrated, all who grieve and mourn. you be real now for a few minutes with him about yourself, your situation. Talk with him. Like Martin Mary did. Talk. Speak out. Don't be so holy that you'd be afraid to speak anything like that to him. Just be truly real. The Jews who were with Mary went to see, to console her. Let people weep. They let her weep. Let people weep if they so wish. But God may speak. His consolation, his healing, his release.
when Jesus saw her weeping. And the Jews also, who had come with her, he was moved in the depths of his spirit and troubled. Then he asked, where have you lain him? They answered, come Lord and see. And Jesus wept. And the Jews said, see how we loved him. But some of them said, if he could open the eyes of the blind man, could he not have kept this man from dying? Jesus was deeply moved again, and he drew near to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across it. Jesus was troubled in his spirit. Jesus wept. He weeps with us right now. If we would just allow him to weep with us. You see how Father Damien's story about the one who, who brought in the crucifix into that home where that boy had been so tragically killed by his own father. It's almost a, that same anger in those Jews who were there saying, see him weeping, could he have not have done something about it? And how we, Lord, how we so often are forcing you to do something in a situation when it is not yet the time. Imposing our fears onto others. Rather than having the courage you had to see, to wait, to weep. You weep with us now. You look at the doors of our hearts. You know that where we are in the tomb, you know the stone that's across parts of our heart, refusing to open up for fear of what might happen us if we did. All that anger and bitterness, the fears we have for ourselves, for our children, for our land, the resentments of all the wrong. It's deep within us, Lord, within our whole fiber of our being. All that anger we carry about what has happened to our people and our land down through the generations of this land. And how we are reacting Lord, could you not do something? Could you not have done something and you didn't? What kind of God are you? Why do you let us suffer? You've heard us cry for peace. You're not listening. The stone is across our heart. The blames we put on ourselves. The failures we blame ourselves for. We look at our children and see they've given up the practice of faith. They've gone astray. 
We're holding this, Lord, in our hearts. We've cried out to you, Lord, for them that you haven't heard. Hear us now, Lord. Let us know. Let us see that Jesus trays found, that Faustina found. Let us see Jesus weeping with us at our losses, our pains, our suffering. Do you ask us to wait? Jesus waits. But he waits with us. And he says, trust in me. I take on all your pain. I weep with you now. Believe this is so. Jesus was deeply moved. Do we believe in this Jesus who loves us so much that he weeps with us in our pain? Weeps because the stone is there holding us back. Harden not your hearts today, but listen to the voice of your Lord. Today, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will take away your heart of stone and give you a heart. Jesus is a heart of flesh, opened up for the whole world, for all. Who are we holding back from the mercy of God? Who do we resent so deeply that we cannot even pray for them? Who, in our history, past and present, we are so loath and fearful to bring before him now, that he may weep for them, and that we may weep with him for them. Have a new heart, a new spirit. Let us go to meet him. Allow him to show his love and compassion and mercy for us and for all. Jesus, may we not fear to see you weeping for us, with us in us because we are baptized into you by that spirit Jesus ordered, take the stone away. But 
Let's give it to her now. Let's give it to her now. Lord, take the stone away. We come together, Lord, praying for each other in friendship that you may take the stone away from our hearts and the hearts of all gathered here. Lord, only you can enable us to do it. Help us, Lord. And Martha said, Have I not told you that if... By now he'll smell, Lord, because it is the fourth day. Oh, Lord, lift off our fear of opening up our tomb for fear of all that may pour out. Let us not doubt your cleansing, healing power. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Have I not told you? Again and again over this weekend, have I not told you? you will see the glory of God. And so they removed the stone. Let's release those we hold in captivity to our resentments and angers and fears and griefs. We just say, Lord, we're here now. We'll take away that stone so that those we hold in bondage in the bondage of our hatreds our angers in the bondage of our history we let go to you now Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said Father I thank you for you have heard me I knew that you hear me always, but my prayer was for the sake of the, these people, that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said, untie him and let him go. Jesus prays that prayer for us right now. Father, I believe you're going to do a great thing. But for the sake of these people, let your glory be revealed. So that they may believe you have sent me to become human in them, incarnate. Oh, Father, that they may believe your utter, infinite love for them, that you love them, that you gave them me as brother, as savior. And now let them see me as Lord over all, even death itself, sin. The dead man, Lazarus, could do nothing for himself. He was utterly dependent on the love of those who surrounded him. He could not move out of that tomb. Jesus, we're so often caught in our own tomb that we cannot move. Help us now. May we hear your voice to us. And may we respond 
in your power, in your strength, in your merciful love, that you may set us free. Come out of the tomb. Come out of the tomb of rejection that many of us have lived in for so long. The tomb of criticism. The tomb of abuse. Of domination. Let us come free, Lord. Let our people come free. Lazarus was loved. Now may we experience that love through one another. Those that we pray for to be released from the tomb experience that love. And may we hear your call to us. Untie him and let him go. May we now, Lord, heart to heart, untie those that we have held. We may let go the hearts, that we remember not the things of old, or pondered on the past. Lord, you are doing a new thing. It has already begun. May we untie so that it may come spring forth as Lazarus sprung forth from the tomb. Amen. among you with the Eucharist. Remember elements of that story that are real to you. Do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? Are you willing to come to me? Are you willing to weep with him? Help him move the stone. Are we willing to come out of our tomb? All we have to say is, yes, Lord, yes. Do it for me. Do it for this land, Lord. From our hearts we cry that this may happen. That we may hear your call. Untie them and let them go. Give the blessing now from the stage. Father Jimmy will bless each section. This is where we have to come to meet the Lord today.
Oh, 